Uh, I was extremely frustrated in the beginning in terms of diagnostic workup, um, imaging, um, and I've done, I can say, probably quite some uh, research in this area. And today, 2014, I'm still as frustrated as I was in the beginning. And the goal of this talk is to share my frustration with you and make you frustrated as well by the end of the talk. So, femoral tabular impingement is starting to be an established concept, being increasingly recognized as a cause of hip pain in the young adult and increasingly dealt with surgically. The diagnosis, however, uh, remains to be carefully made. Uh, not every painful hip is impingement. There are obviously very clear cases where a simple x-ray will show you a massive bump and the clinical history next to that will make your diagnosis. However, there is a huge gray area. Basically, we all impinge upon extreme activities and up to 30% of people will show increased alpha angles or fit other criteria that make up a phi morphology it is, however, the subtle combination of the activity pattern, the combined femoral tabular morphology, and quite probably a genetic background, which makes someone young to move from a phi morphology to an actual phi syndrome, with subsequent cartilage damage to the joint. Now, we can get a good idea of the activity pattern of the patient through clinical history of the patient, we still don't have a clear view on the genetics, um, but we can definitely evaluate morphology um, and abnormalities in imaging. With any patient, we all start off uh, with x-rays. And I think it's well established now there is a problem in reliability and diagnostic of the plain x-ray variables. And there have been so many published by now. It all started off with alpha angle and then came offset and then several other. And then they said, you have to do different views to get a better result. At the end, it's a nice screening tool and you can get the clear cases out, but you are still in the dark on the majority of the cases. And the bump or a positive sign does not mean you have an impingement syndrome case. MRI, on the other hand, I think it's valid as CT. We use CT a lot, so most of the talk will go on CT. Um, but there are some pros and cons to MRI as well. So it's surely valuable in the evaluation of resulting soft tissue damage. However, there is a problem of sensitivity and specificity. We are currently performing a multicenter study. We have about 800 cases there. Um, when you compare the MRI protocol with the actual findings um, during the arthroscopy, you get about 60 to 65 percent sensitivity reliability. And even worse, the younger the patient, the lower these results. Further up, um, some studies have been performed on asymptomatic cases in terms of evaluation of the labrum where they found in 100 cases up to 82% of so-called labrum lesions, while these patients were just volunteers. Finally, the etiological structural abnormality, which we want to deal with surgically, can best be viewed on CT. CT is better fit to see bone, and that's the cause of all the lesions, and that's one of the reasons that why we use CT. Further on, if you use CT arthrography, you get quite close to the results for the soft tissues as MRI. Now, with CT, definitely, you can get a better measurement of your variables, alpha angle, um, femoral head neck offset, than you can do on X-ray, and you're less bothered by your view, uh, done view, regular AP, and whatever. Further on, you can get radial views. You can get a better evaluation of your alpha angle. You can 
battery evaluate, joint space narrowing, you can see the result, kists, and etc. And more recently, more attention is going to the overall anatomy of the hip in combination of the acetabulum. Uh, femoral version might be an important variable. All of these things you can more easily access uh, with a CT scan. Which would be r more difficult with MRI on top. But CT scanning data has far much information than just your planar views. It's very easy and common business to get 3D reconstructions from your radiologist. We'll provide you a full 3D view of the hip and if present, cam lesion or other, any other bony lesions. Further, the high resolution CT images and the clear contrast properties of the bone allow for several advanced applications as the images can be automatically segmented and similarly used in more extended and complicated applications. This is a very simple application, just fitting a sphere on the head will give you a clearer view on the overall alpha angle and the parts of the bone that drop out, but it can go much further. There are several software packages becoming available that provide you, I don't know if it works, no. Um, that provide you with a full 3D view of the cam lesion um, that provide you even dynamic simulations on what is the range of motion of this patient compared to an average, where is the collision occurring during which movement, and it goes further and further. It is this type of simulations that we are starting to use as a standard for virtual planning and computer assisted surgery, of which I had a small movie which worked outside. Can someone get it working? Can you go in the folder and play the movie? You can't get in the folder? The presentation folder, you can access that? Not working. Okay. So this is a very nice video of a navigated hip artroscopy. Um, the beauty of it is that next to your screen, on what you see with your hip scope, is that you get a full 3D view of the hip. And you see the lesion that you plant, and you see where you are with your tools, how much bone you take away, and it's a treasure. So, in conclusion, CT imaging data offers huge amount of information, and the progress Okay, there we have it. Just demonstrate how it looks like. Um, so like any regular navigated surgery, you have to present your tools and calibrate. And this is the extra view that you get on top of your regular scope view. So you see what you're doing on the lesion with your burr. And for me, this is a huge advancement. Um, the limitations, it all comes down to how you plan your surgery. Um, the biggest criticism we get is that we don't include soft tissues in the simulations. Um, however, the bony range of motion at this point is more or less the best we have at the moment as state of the art. But there are several groups working to include the soft tissues and get stress patterns uh, through finite element analysis, which could serve as well uh, for the next generation of planning tools. Uh, and I hope they will be there soon because uh, I'm waiting for them. Thank you very much.